Hello everyone and welcome back to the Crafty Yellow Camper and today I have an online exclusive to share with you. Um, the stamp set is called Garden Meadow. Um, some lovely images in here. You've got the wheelbarrow full of flowers, basket full of flowers, um, some separate flowers, the watering can, some little, um, I think they're meant to be quail, um, uh, five bar gate, well Wellingtons, and then you've got some tools and some nice greetings. So you've got, hello, I can't imagine having a better friend. Happy birthday. Thinking of you. Every day is a fresh start. And it comes with a matching set of dies. There's a couple of dies missing, I've just realised out of here. I've obviously left those by my cut and emboss machine. Um, Stampin' Up have done what they usually do. And they've given us dies to cut out the main images. So there is a die for the wheelbarrow, the watering can, the basket, these flowers uh the the I, th I think they're quail um the five bar gate the wellingtons and the tools but then they've given us some add-on dies as well so i'm just going to pull these out um this is the thing i like about stamping up sets you don't just get dies that cut the shapes of things so we've got this door um and you're going to see me using that in um two cards so in this video and then another video which um i'm about to record for you as well so this cuts the door shape, but it actually cuts um, where this, I don't know if you can see, where this raised line is, that's actually the cut line. So you end up with the door shape and the frame as well, um, which is really useful, as you'll see in this video and the next one. Um, I like it when they do things like that. And the, the thing to remember when you are using Stampin' Up! dies is that always look for the raised line and that's where it is actually going to cut because sometimes they don't cut the image out of a piece of paper they sort of cut the image into a piece of cardstock if that makes sense um so you've also got these dies here so this one so this has got our raised edge so this will cut the edge there but it won't cut around this edge here so if you want to make um uh, a field edge if you like this will cut the edging for you but you will need to cut along the bottom and it'll emboss these or cut these little tussocks out again with this grass one this has got a continuous edge so this will cut you that line of grass um, and the same with this one so really good for scenery building um, which again another video I'll be showing you how to use those Okay, and then the thing I really like about the five bar gate is that you've got the die that cuts the outside shape of it, but then you've actually got the die that cuts the bars. Um, again, I'll, I'll be using that in another video um, to come. Okay, I'm just going to pop those back away. So a really, really useful set. You, you can make lots and lots of different cards with that. Um, so that's the stamp set. The other thing that you might see lurking behind are the beautiful papers. Now, this is a six by six pack, so six by six inches, um, and you get, let me just pull the pack out. I've pulled out one of everything to show you. So it's called Meandering Meadows and it coordinates with the Garden Meadow Suite, or Garden Meadow Bundle, I should say. Um, and you get 48 sheets and there are, I think, 12 designs. There's four sheets of each of the designs and they are really beautiful. Um, it tells you on the back what colours they go with. So there's a lot of colours in these papers. You've got balmy blue, basic black, blueberry bushel, cherry cobbler, crushed curry, fresh freesia, garden green, granny apple green, highland heather, lemon lime twist, melon mambo, knight of navy, orchid oasis, pecan pie, petal pink, pumpkin pie and shaded spruce. I did tell you there was a lot of colours. So I'm just going to, before we get going on our card, I'm just going to give you a show of these papers because they are truly beautiful. Um, they've obviously had a very talented artist paint them and then have them transferred into papers. Um, so I'm going to go through the main sides first and then I'll flip them over and show you the back side. So you've got this gorgeous one, which reminds me of... Um, Oh, not bluebells, almost like hollyhocks, actually. And you've got the little meandering stream on that one. This one, you've got the foreground of um, the gorgeous wildflowers and the trees with the sort of grass meandering between them. This one, you've got these gorgeous, they're almost like tulips. 
um, and you've got a little piece of uh, old fence and some shoreline there. Really, really beautiful. Just the card fronts on their own. This is one of my personal favourites. I love this. These remind me of um, daffodils or oxeye daisies. And then again, you've got a piece of um, background, which could be water, could be meadow. Um, this one, this definitely is oxeye daisies. Um, and again, you've got that sort of path going off into the distance. So beautiful for scenery. Uh, this one, I think that might be a tall field of sunflowers. And again, you've got the little path going down there. This one again, I don't know why I said I've got a favourite. They're all beautiful. This one again, this could be a path. This could be some water. You've got wildflowers, trees and some gorgeous sort of background scenery. Again, another sort of winding either path or water, uh, depending on your interpretation. Um, same thing again. This could be like a dry riverbed or it could be water. And then this one with this really vivid red, which just makes me think of poppies fields of poppies okay this one um, again lots of wildflowers going off into the distance and this one again you've got the trees framing what could be water or could be a meadow or could be a piece of grass going off so that's the front sides if you like and then I'll flip them over and show you the backs so on most of the backs we've got um, sort of um, abstract um, brush work so this one's got the really nice Highland Heather and some um, lovely pinks in. This one just makes me think of a summer sky. Ah, this is one of the few that has got flowers on the back side. Um, so sort of wild flowers. Another one just makes me think of glorious sky. Now this one's a really interesting one. It's almost like a, um, a timber texture, um, which would be really useful for men's cards. This one again reminds me of a green field. Um, then this one, this reminds me of the background of the um, water lilies painting by Monet. You can just imagine some water lilies sitting on there, can't you? It's gorgeous. Again, this one, um, really nice greens in there. Could be used um, same way as the Monet one, really. I'm wondering if they took some um, inspiration from that. Another good one for men's cards. It's always nice to have some neutral sort of textured backgrounds. This one is sort of a dry brush background same with this one but obviously in the um, orchid oasis i think that is yeah it might be a mix of orchid oasis and night of navy and then this is another floral one again makes me think of um, hollyhocks and foxgloves really lovely really really lovely and so much um, choice whether you use the front or whether you use the back. Okay, I'll pop those to one side. Really, they are absolutely one of my favourite DSPs that we've had recently. Okay, now this is the card we're going to make. It's a gatefold card um, and it opens up and I've used um, some of the beautiful DSP. So this is all done with a six by six sheet. So I've used some of the beautiful DSP on the two front um, gate parts, if you like. And then I had a piece left over and it wasn't big enough to cover the whole inside of the card. So what I've done is inked with my blending brush in garden green, which is what this card base is, down the sides. Um, and then I've used this, it's actually from the Notes of Nature dies. Um, and I just thought it gave it a little something. Um, so as if you're looking in, and then these gorgeous, 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 let me show you these, what have I done with them? gorgeous gorgeous i've got so much gorgeousness on my desk today it's untrue um these these actually go with it as well adhesive backed dragonflies and birds so they're a gold um color dragonfly and a bird and they just really lift i mean i've just got that little dragonfly flying over the meadow there and on the front we've just got this little bird Hopefully you can see that on the wing and the little dragonfly in the middle there. Just adds a little touch of something. Now, I used the arch die and my original plan was to put that over the front of the gatefold to frame the scene. That was my original plan and I may still do it, um, but I don't know yet. So I'm not going to put that on there for now. So I'm going to pop that card away and you can see I've got the gate middle there. I'll be using that for something else. So let's just move that out of the way and we'll get started. OK, so I've got all my components here that I need to make the card. And the first thing I'm going to do is bring in my trimmer 
to make the card base. So the general rule of thumb when making a gatefold card is that the two fronts of the card are the same size put together as the back of the card. So for this card, I am going to score it at, what did I do it at? 5.25 from each side. So this is a piece of A4 cardstock that's cut in half across the width. So it's um, 21 by 14.8. So you get two out of a, an A4 sheet. And now I'm going to just pop that in and I'm going to grab my glasses so I can actually see the increments properly. I had to go to the opticians yesterday and she's told me I now need to wear glasses for reading and glasses for driving. So one, two, and over a little bit. So I'm actually short-sighted in one eye and long-sighted in the other. So generally speaking, it balances it out. But she slapped me on the wrist, well, not literally, metaphorically, and said that, I'm, I'm too, that I am putting too much strain on my good eye by not wearing my glasses. So I'm trying to be good. It's not going well. So I am actually being a good girl and wearing my glasses. Not that you can see that. Okay, right. So I'm just burnishing those folds so they sit down nice and flat. And I do like to turn it over and burnish the back as well with my bone folder. It just means that the card sits flatter. Okay, so that's our um, card base. And then what we've got here is a piece of basic white and this is cut at 10 by 14.3 so it's a matte layer and i'm just going to bring in a piece of scrap paper and grab my blending brush and i'm using a larger one so we do have them in two sizes um, and i'm going to just blend down both sides of oh, i can see the cat's been in here i love my cat but she's a pain when it comes to her hair She's not a pedigree, she's um, a long-haired cat. She's built like a Maine Coon, actually. She's very long in the body, very petite, but very long in the body. But she does love to shed over my craft desk. She likes to come and sit in here. Our son moved out recently and she was usually to be found on his bed, but... Um, since he's moved out, she seems to have decided that anything that smells of me is the current favourite to sit on. Okay, so I'm just inking that up. Got a good amount of ink on there. And I'm going to start off the piece of cardstock and on my scrap paper so we don't get marks. And I'm just going to ink. Don't worry too much about this side because this is going to be covered up. And that's exactly what I didn't want to do. Get the brush mark there. I'm just going to ink up down that side. And then repeat the process on this side. Again, starting off. And you don't need to do the whole piece of cardstock because obviously your DSP is going to cover in the middle. Just make sure you've got the edges. Okay, so let's put that to one side for now. Okay, I'll blend and brushes to one side. Right, so that can go to one side. Now we need to choose a piece of paper to cut now i used the one with the wildflowers on my previous card and i think i'm going to choose a different one i think the this kind of card is probably better suited to a whole um whole scene rather than the one with something going off but it's personal choice okay now i'm going to cut this down to do the gate folds um and so our gates are 5.25 um, wide by 14.8 high so we need 14.3 so I'm just going to trim a little piece of the sky off this and it really is a sliver there you go um, and then I'm going to cut my gates so because I want the scene to run across the sheet of paper then I need to make sure that I cut them in the right order so the front panels are going to be cut at five uh, centimetres by 14.3. And then what's left is going in the middle. So I'm going to start on the left hand side of my cardstock and I'm going to cut that at five centimetres. And that's going to make one of my gates. Um, and then I'm torn here. So on my first card, I then cut the next five centimetre piece and I had the. So these are our pieces. 
So I cut my first five centimetre piece off the left hand side of the paper and then I cut my next five centimetre piece so they matched on the front. Now part of me is wondering whether I should have taken five centimetres off the other side but then that is not going to match that tree. So I'm going to go with what I did before. So I'm going to cut my two five centimetre panels because they're going to be next door to each other. And it actually leaves you a piece that is about five and a half or just under five and a half. Um, yeah, about 5.3, I think. Okay, so that's our panels. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to adhere this leftover piece to the middle of our card. So I'm using Tombow multi-purpose glue for that. Don't put too much on, otherwise it'll squidge out of the edges. And that's going to go down the centre of our card. Uh, I'm trying. I'm just eyeballing this, but if you're really um, fussy, then obviously you can measure it. Okay, so that's that. So that's the piece down the middle. And then what I'm going to do is bring back in our card base and stick. Let me get rid of that so you can see a bit better. I'm going to stick these two pieces and obviously I want them to remake the scene. So this piece is going on the left hand side. So usually I open out my cards because I find it easier um, to stick things down because they're not bouncing around. But I don't want to do that for this one because otherwise I'll end up with it in the wrong direction. So this piece has been cut, so it just gives us a little bit of edge. And it is a tiny piece of edge because I want the pattern to match. Okay, you could cut it a little bit narrower if you wanted to, which would give you a slightly bigger piece in the middle. But I wouldn't go any smaller than about 4.75. Okay, and then this piece is going to come over and match here. So the important thing on this is to make sure that you've got the tops and the bottoms lined up. And I want more of an edge on the outside edge so that the pattern matches. There we go. Hopefully that made sense. So we've just got a very, very tiny green edge on this side and more of an edge on this side. OK, if you really wanted an equidistant edge around, then cut this at 4.75. OK, right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to stick in our middle panel to the card. So, as I said before, this is a standard piece of basic white cut at 10 by 14.3. And that will give us a border all the way around. And I'm just trying to make sure that I've got that level. That's the joy of using Tombows. It does give you a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, so that's that. So that's the middle of our card. So when the card is stood up, you should see the whole scene. Um, and it doesn't really notice that you've got the end of it in the middle, if that makes sense. Right, now I just needed something just to fill this in. So I've got, as I said, these pieces are cut from just some scrap. These kind of dies are brilliant for using up your scrap pieces. Um, and this is using the long leaf die from Notes of Nature. Now, the only thing you have to be careful on this is that the die cuts in these serrations into the leaves to give it depth, which is lovely, but you don't want glue bleeding through. So what I've done on mine is I've put glue on the leaves that have a solid section. And again, it is absolutely less is more. Most of the leaves have a solid section, but if not, you've got the stem obviously in the middle. And I tend to go for where the two leaves join the stem because that tends to be a slightly wider piece of cardstock there. And you literally want a dab of glue on there. Now I'm going to try not to do what I did earlier, which was drop it. Okay, and that is going to fit down the side of our image. I'm lining it up with the bottom of the card and it's just the right length. And then just give that a press down just to make sure where you've got your glue is stuck. OK, and then what I did, I had a piece of um, piece, odd piece of cardstock left over and I was going to put two full length ones down. But then I thought it would look quite nice with a shorter one. The other side so i'm just going to snip that off and then we're going to add some glue to this one 
So again, I'm just putting the glue where it's solid cardstock and not where there's just the um, where the marks are because that then might squidge through and then you've got a sticky mess which you don't want on the inside of your card because you don't want to fold it shut and then not be able to open it okay so again that's going on the bottom there and that's just going to snake its way up the only thing you do have to make sure is that none of your leaves stick out over the edge of the cardstock otherwise you won't be able to fold the card um and it will fold the leaf up which will crumple it okay i'm just gonna give that a good press okay so there's our leaves now i liked it as it was i don't think i'm going to use this frame um i can see that it would make a very nice sort of focal point but because of the size of it on my card it's cutting off the trees even if i put it higher up then it it just doesn't look right so i'm not going to use that on this card i'm going to leave it like that um I'm also not going to put a sentiment on this card until I need to use it. And then your options are to either put a sentiment on a strip that goes attached one side to the card, or you could open it up and put a sentiment across the middle there. Um, and then to give you some space to write, I'm just going to add a piece of cardstock on the back. Well, I would if I could find one. Later, I will add a piece of cardstock to the back to give you somewhere to write. Or you could um, put a white panel in one of those sides um, and write on there. Okay, so that's our first card using the um, Garden Meadow suite. I hope you like it and I will be back soon with some more inspiration um, using this suite. There's just so, so many options. Okay, look out for the next video. I'll be back soon. Thanks for watching and happy stamping. Bye for now.